Hello everyone and welcome back to Star of the Universe Tarot. We are doing the full moon readings for the fire elements, starting off with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. If you have not seen one of my full moon or new moon readings before, basically what we do is we get three cards. We get the fading energy, the current energies, and the energies that will be directly affected by the full moon which is the Hunter's Full Moon on Halloween this year. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading, so if it does not resonate, go ahead and um, feel free to take a look at any of my other videos. They're all um, by Zodiac. They're all timeless, whatever you feel guided to. And also feel free to check any and all your placements. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, it does not matter. Whatever just sounds good to you. Um, these are more love readings. If you're looking for a general reading, also the zodiac signs, okay? Is there anything else I want to say? I do not believe so. Oh, if it does resonate, you guys, go ahead and like, share, comment, you know, all that good stuff. We know how to subscribe. We know how to use YouTube. All right. So we have the energy is gaining momentum, the waxing moon. That is the energy that we are fading out of. So something has been um, in the build-up stages. We have you and your loved ones are safe, new moon and cancer. You could be dealing with the cancer. You could have cancer in your chart, Leo. But this is basically telling me that you felt like you were building up to protect either your loved ones, you know, your family in general or someone in particular that you consider family and then for the energies that will be directly affected by the full moon is don't let the past hold you back south noid okay let's dig in a little deeper why is you and your loved ones are safe oh okay just pop right out there Okay, we have passion. Allow your heart to... And Sorry, I have Alec in here today. Almost every day. <laughs> okay, every day. Sometimes he's in here when I'm recording. Sometimes he's not. <laughs> okay, passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. And then we have worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Okay, so... Let me see. Tell me a little bit more about your loved ones are safe. Okay, love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Okay, so there's definitely someone who's um, coming towards you new. Uh, hold on, give me a second. I don't like this lighting. I hope this is a little better. Okay, so... We, with love yourself first, your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, one more time. There must be a lot of distractions in your life, Leo, but also I feel like I always have distractions during Leo readings. Okay. Okay. I want to say loving yourself first is definitely what brought divine timing into work in your love life. And there's definitely a passionate new beginning behind you and your loved ones are saved. Let's see. Why is don't let the past hold you back here? Okay. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Okay, don't be so serious. Don't be so serious. You have a passionate new beginning coming in. Let's see. Tell me more about playfulness. Okay, we have soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate, Leo. And use playfulness to recapture romance and allow your youthful spirit uh, fun to shine. <laughs> Let me see. We have let your friends help. Ask for support from others. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Codependency addictions are affecting your romantic life. And then finances and career issues 
Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Okay. Makes sense. So, let's see. I want to say that this codependency is definitely um, work-based. It could be um, that either you or your person is definitely a workaholic. Definitely. Like... Anyway, go back to the lobby, and then we're going to go back. Like, I'm married to the work, baby. Heard. But with, like, your friend's help and express your love, I feel like this person really is kind of breaking up this little codependency that you have here. Let's see. Be careful. What is the current challenge? Okay. Yeah, let's see. Codependency. The devil. There is definitely addictions. Um, and what, like I said, with financial... Finances and career, I mean financial issues. It could be that you're... Like I said, it's just a work... It's a workaholic thing. It's like I don't have time for you. I just don't have time for you. <laughs> okay. All right. That could be you, Leo. That could be your person, but there's someone definitely pushing while so, um pushing away while someone's trying to walk towards you. Can you explain the devil a little bit more to me? Okay, we have the chariot. Yeah, you definitely want to move away from this energy. You want to move forward and you don't want to look back is what I'm is what I'm hearing like Tell me about playfulness The high priestess you do Okay There could be silent treatment here there is um definitely someone being led and guided away from this devil energy to to um but they're being led in silence. Under the deck, you have the Hierophant, and you have the Fool, and the Emperor. Okay, the Hierophant is Taurus energy. This is talking about um, either A, this person is being led by their intuition to a higher, um, to a higher commitment, either spirituality or... Um, Definitely towards another person. It could be also that somebody is being led and um, guided away from from this marriage. Okay, Alec. And they're led and guided to take a leap of faith and to stand in their power while they do it. So that and then will of fortune under the deck, Leo. So there's definitely victory in. And this chance, and the and there's always okay. First of all, there's always victory in letting go of toxic cycles. Point blank, period. There's always success in that. So even if you've moved away from this toxic energy, um, in order to move towards a higher commitment, and you know, the, this is the full card. You know, it is not guaranteed. Like, there's no guarantee with this leap of faith, but it's definitely going to put you, Leo, or your person in their power with this uh, Aries uh, Taurus energy here. You have Capricorn, Cancer, Pisces, Cancer, Taurus, Aries, and then Aries and Taurus again. You have Cancer twice, you have Taurus twice, you have Aries twice. Okay. Let's see. And that's great. Oh, oh, and that's great, Alex says. <laughs> All right, let's see what your overall message is. Okay. How is Leo going to be dealing with the full moon? Yeah, 51. Okay. 
messages, deadlines, and anticipation. Waiting, waiting, waiting. All my life I've been waiting for my life to begin as if somehow my life was ahead of me and that someday I would arrive at it. Carmen Mayhem. Waiting for a message to arrive can bring anxiety, fear, hope, good news or bad news, acceptance or rejection. A ticking clock count down, counts down the time remaining. A young woman has been waiting anxiously. The sleeping dog suggests she has done so for some time. The phone is silent and the bouquet of roses suggests a previous response was received, but from whom? The same sender or someone else? Either way, the anticipated answer finally arrives. But by now the clock indicates that the hour is past, just in time or just too late. The process of waiting for a response isn't merely one of passing the time patiently. The immediacy or tardiness of the response may also provide some insight beyond the message itself. A deadline imposed may be tied to a condition or an ultimatum. Is there flexibility or has the opportunity been lost? And that's up to you, Leo, to figure out because I think that's really what's attached to this um, to, I was going to say to this Aries right here. <laughs> you could be dealing with an Aries. Um, to to this full card here. Um, because that, that's, that's what I feel the anticipation is coming from. From the silence of, of either moving forward, taking this leap of faith. But someone, it's like someone has to come forward. And it might as well be you because I guess you're the one that is moving away from the toxic cycle or you know vice versa oof okay we have I am um, I am unapologetic about what I desire and trust that what I focus on will grow okay <laughs> that's that sounds very Leo energy <laughs> okay anything else yes okay energy flows where my intention goes And my vibes speak louder than my words. And your vibes are hella fiery. Hella fiery, Leo. And I feel like this is, um, it feels good, to be honest. This shit, I wish I was a Leo right now. Alright, um, I hope this helped. You guys have a wonderful full moon. Also, a happy Halloween. And I'll see you guys for the November reads. And we are moving on to Sagittarius. All right, you guys, welcome back. This is for the Sagittarius Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Um, full moon reading, guys. You already know. We have three cards. We have the fading energy, the current energies, and the energies that will be directly affected by the full moon, which is the Hunter's full moon this Halloween. Okay, Sag. Um, if this reading doesn't resonate, go ahead, um, and check any and all your other placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs, go ahead and, um, this, this is, um, more of a love reading, so if you're looking for something general, go ahead and check the Zodiacs. Um, they're all timeless, all titled, well, to a certain extent, whatever calls to you. Okay, so let's just go ahead and dive right in here. The fading energies we have work through your fears, the new moon, and Scorpio. You could be dealing with the Scorpio, or you could have Scorpio in your chart. For the current energies, you have take time to breathe out. And a win-win outcome is in your forecast, the full moon in Libra. Okay. You got a lot of good energy here, Sagittarius. You've been definitely working on yourself, working through probably some triggers, going uh, possibly Dark Knight of the Soul stuff. Um, but your de current mood is chill. Like, it's definitely time to just breathe out and take time for you because you already know, like, your future is assured right here. Like, you have a win-win outcome, win -win outcome in your forecast. Okay, let's see. Let's dig in a little deeper. 
Why is take time to breathe out here? Okay, we have passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Okay, of course. Of course, my fire signs are all about passion. Okay, let's see. Tell me more about passion, please. All right. <laughs> Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. You have finances and career. Okay. All right, guys. So either your person is very, very passionate about their career and very career driven right now, um, Sag, or your person is, um, could have um, like some kind of how do you call it? Um, like office, office romance. Yeah, that. Let's see. Tell me more. Okay, but we have. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Okay. No. Okay. I guess that could be, for some, it could be that your person, Sagittarius, is just very, um, how do you say it? Um, very charismatic. You know, the, I mean, I'm, I'm, okay, first of all, you could be dealing with another fire sign, Sag. Um, because I'm really getting Queen of Wands energy. I'm just getting somebody who's very charismatic, someone who's very outgoing, someone who um, everybody wants to be around all the time. And I feel like it's not it. Um, it's not just. Um, let's say it's not just at work. It's at home. It's you know when you go out. It's you know it every aspect of it and I think that um it could be causing some insecurities here for you Sag and Spirit's basically trying to tell you just to stay optimistic because kind of basically what you think about you bring about so if you think that you know it's possible that your person is um how do you say it like Oh, messing around, like, we'll use the same example, like messing around in the workplace or whatever, don't manifest that. Especially you, like, Sag, because, like, um, fire energy, your guys' manifestation shit is just off the roof. And if you guys are manifesting in anger, like, that shit will happen. It will happen. And quickly, too. And not just that, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be the one who wants to kick yourself in the ass for it. Because you're, ugh. Fuck, why did I why did I even go there? Why did I even go there? Because you can't get mad at your person for that, especially if they had no intentions of that at all. Like I understand if, you know, there was maybe a relationship in the workplace before you guys started working out like a fling or whatever that that died down or whatever because um I don't know, you guys became official or whatever. Like, it could be, um, just a lingering, um, like a lingering insecurity from something that has to do with that. But, like I said, we have to stay optimistic. I really don't, what you think about, you bring about, so just don't, don't think up a story that you're going to end up kicking yourself for after. Because when, it, oh, shit, that's exactly what I thought was happening. Well, no shit, you thought it up. <laughs> uh, you're the creator of your own story. You're the creator of your own reality. Fire signs need to realize this the most because, like you're, like I said, um, fire manifestation energy. You guys are angry. You guys got passion. Passionate new beginning. You want it here, now, mine. Done. And then when... <laughs> When you're like, oh, shit, like, I didn't mean to hurt that person or, oh, fuck, like, now that person's really never going to come back because I overreacted or why did I want to hurt that person in that way so that, you know, over, over nothing, you know, I'm hearing over nothing at all. So it could be that somebody is, um, it's probably causing arguments or causing fights and it's, um... It's misplaced anger, I think. Why is a win-win outcome here? We have, this could be a, the one you've already met, the romantic partner you see. Mm. 
tell me more. We have keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. And that's where I'm telling you, stay optimistic. Maybe you're not used to being with this kind of person. Maybe you're used to... Um, See, it's, it's kind of confusing to me um, that a Sagittarius would be so, um, how do you say it? It almost feels like Pisces energy, you know? Like, no, my person can't, you know, be in the spotlight. We want I want somebody who's going to be here with me, like, in the corner. Like, And I get that. I get that. I'm a Pisces rising, so I feel that on a personal level. But I also understand that, um, uh, you know, some some people, they just can't do it they prefer a simple way of living and this could be your person Sag like I said if you want to reverse the roles go ahead um because like I said to me Sagittarian energy it's like oh passion you know this could be the one oh no you're mine you're mine and everybody knows you're mine so to to tell you Sagittarius to keep an open mind it's kind of like is this uh your energy is this your person's energy you have let your friends help you. Ask for support from others. You have worth waiting for. Divine time is at work in your love life. Free yourself. It's time to take back control in your life. And wedding. This situation involves marriage. Okay, Sagittarius. You got it going on here. So either, either you or your person is de is definitely contemplating um, moving this to the next level. If you guys have been dating already, like um, maybe in, um, you know, if you guys have been dating, you know, to that boyfriend girlfriend status. If you guys are boyfriend girlfriend, like to that engagement status, whatever the next step in your little journey is, you guys take it as it resonates. <laughs> now, damn it, if you guys just met. And I have wedding right here. Like, don't think you're going to get married tomorrow. And then tell me, but Debbie, you said... No, 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 no. I said we are moving up <laughs> to the next stage in whatever we are in our journey. Wherever that may be for you. <laughs> okay. Now that that's clarified. Okay. We have the hangman Piscean energy. I told you, you could be dealing with the Pisces Sag. But there's definitely a shift in perspective that needs to be made. Tell me more about the hangman, please. The hierophant. See? There's definitely... I'm telling you, there's a next level. There, There's about to be a jump in where this relationship is headed to. Like I said, it could be marriage for some of you guys, but it's definitely moving up. Like, this is, this is, um, I'm hearing this is too quick. <laughs> so someone is, is someone's already worried. <laughs> Tell me more about this could be the one. You have the sun, Leo energy. That's happiness. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you got Pisces, you got Pisces, uh, Taurus, Leo, Sag here. Um, we also have Scorpio and Libra in the background um oh my gosh I'm excited for you yeah like I feel like this is just a fresh new fresh new perspective Sag so like I said if this isn't you this is definitely your person going fucking crazy about where they want to commit their happiness to but I want to say that ultimately it's going to be you I don't even see, like, a potential other person. I just see you all over this. And them having to free themselves from this, like, uh, I don't know, like a m mental entrapment. Okay. Final messages for Sagittarius. Alrighty, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Okay. Let's see what you got. You got number 31. Okay, secrecy and confidentiality. 
Every relationship between two individuals or two groups will be characterized by the ratio of secrecy that is involved in it. From the clandestine world of espionage to the privacy of our personal inner thought, we attempt to keep our own secrets but seek those of others. Any sharing of such confidentialities requires a demonstration of trust, whether it is between nations, corporations, or intimate family and friends. In the context of human relationships, our curiosity or need to know may be for self-interest or a desire to help others. To achieve either will require a key that in turn provides access to the information we seek. It may be facts and figures or simply a better understanding of the circumstances. Such information may be provided freely by those who control it or withheld until we have proven ourselves. These keys may take the form of the most complex cryptic puzzle or password, but also a simple you-can-trust-me gesture offered to a troubled friend. In this card, the guardian is herself symbolically an oracle. She possesses the answers you seek and can provide you with the keys to access them. But before doing so, you may have to prove that you are ready. Seeking greater truths, even those of self-discovery, often requires some demonstration of worthiness. And, Sag, like I said, if this is not you. This is definitely your person going round and round in their head about this. And dude, they're so in love. They're so in love. They're so smitten with you. And if it's not you, um, you're definitely smitten with your person. You're just like, oh, so damn cute. Like I could feel it. Like it's kind of weird. <laughs> but I like it. It's a good kind of weird. Final messages from the universe. All right. We have. I always trust the direction. Of the universe and know I am being guided. My faith has the power to turn trauma into healing and conflict into growth and fear into love. And in any moment I can surrender to a powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. And I think this is what your person is trying to achieve, Sag, definitely. Like, um, just this this moment of surrender of, I think, possibly just their feelings for you, On honestly. Um, it could, hands down, just be that. Just trying to take back control of how much they, they care or how much they, they want to express how much they, they genuinely love you, I think. Um, but yeah. Okay, Sag, this is going to be an interesting <laughs> full moon for you. Have a happy Halloween, and I will see you guys for the November reads, and then we are going to move on to the Aries Collective. All right, Aries, hi. It's your turn. So we are doing the full moon reading, which if you guys know, if you guys have not done this before, three cards. Fading energies, current energies, and the energies that will be directly affected by the full moon, which is the Hunter's full moon this Halloween in October 2020. Oof. Aries, your cards are going to talk to me. Okay. Um, this is going to be kind of a more love-oriented read guys so if you're looking for something more general you could go ahead and check any of my videos um they're all timeless and you could go by sign if it doesn't resonate just go ahead and like feel go crazy and check sun moon rising venus signs all of it any and all all right including if you're dealing with any of those signs i don't mind cross watchers just know that you know, I will say, hey, you know, reverse the energies or blah, 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 blah. But it, I, I'm not, um, how do I say this? I'm not in, 
I'm here for the sign that I'm reading for. Like, for example, here. I'm here for Aries. And if we're cross-watching for Aries, I'm not going to be sentimental of your feelings. And I'm sorry. That's all I mean by that. But I do also understand that, you know, it's okay. No judgments here. Like I said, it's safe for you. Just understand that I'm talking to Aries and I will always talk to Aries in for, or um, any of the signs in first person first with them. Okay, that being said, fading energies, we have meditate and contemplate. Pisces, new moon. You could be dealing with the Pisces. You could have Pisces in your chart. That is the fading energy. So you definitely have been contemplating on something for quite some time. And with this ener um, with surrender to the divine and the current energies, you definitely have just, um, you've, re you've reached that point. You've done everything um, there can um there can be done about this, like you've already reached, um, for some of you, you've reached your boiling point, that's what I'm hearing, for others of you, you just, re you just reached your limit, you're just like, um, I, I, I don't know what to do about this situation anymore, um, I'm handing it over to God, just do what you will with it, okay, and then, I'm sorry, and the energies that will be directly affected by the full moon is um, what do you need to release so there's definitely some residue of either a some toxic energy um, um, some residue of codependencies addiction something that needs to be released and it's definitely going to be highlighted either in these current energies it could be like um, it could be exactly on the full moon for some of you um it could be the um the build up to the full moon okay tell me more about surrender to the divine we have release your ex the time has come to clear your energy yeah this is something that you've been dreading over. Like, either A, you're just like, please, Lord, don't let this person come back in my life. Or B, um, you know, it, it's kind of funny. I'm also getting, um, for, for those of you that this is like, this is a soulmate that's not um, a romantic, um, you know, just, uh, just some somebody that you're not romantically involved with like a friend or a um a co-worker or um a relative cousin sibling something like that and <laughs> i'm almost getting like this oh um we broke up again and for whatever reason aries you're the one who is like oh no like come talk to me what happened this time and you're kind of like you're looking at this person like I can't deal with this shit right now. Like, I'm over it. I'm over it. Like, you need to you need to talk to baby Jesus, not me. I've talked to baby Jesus enough. <laughs> and you're still here. <laughs> Tell me more about release your ex. This could be the one you've already met, the romantic partner you seek. Ooh, Aries. This person is really fucking with your flow, huh? I feel like this person's really getting into your energy field and it is bothering you. It is bothering you, Aries. It's like you feel every time you've moved away from this, something brings this person back. For some of you, it could be a letter. As far as letters go, guys, um, not just letters, just any um, um, gifts, tokens, stuff that you save, you know, from past relationships, 
um, they carry a, a certain energy and it keeps the, these people tight uh, and bound to you in a certain way. And um, it's not it's not recommended that if you want no if you no longer want ties with this person to keep this stuff like under your bed or in your room with you. It's not a good idea. It's better to keep it um, away from your personal space, away from under your bed, away from your closet, away from um, things that you are energetically connected with on a daily basis. That's if you're truly trying to cut and um, you know cut and bind the ties, you know, like, I mean, cut and unbind the ties, excuse me, uh, someone, some of you guys could have a binding spell on you, like, be binded, y'all know who y'all mess with, don't ask me, but who could be binding me, I don't know, girl, who you fucking with, you know, or boy, sorry, say, you know, it could go both ways, you know, like, you know, if you would know <laughs> if you run at risk of being, um, you know, magically bound to someone, you just know, okay? Like, let's, let's be, um, how do you say it? Um, let's, let's have common sense here. Let's be adults. Okay, um, chemistry, there's a strong magnetic attraction here. Yeah, I'm telling you, there is definitely a, a, this pulling energy, and I feel like it's it's every time you you get close to to a different person, it's like it's funny because to me the guides right here they are guiding you two together, but it's almost like if she could uh, or he that this person, I'm getting a real feminine energy. I'm sorry, guys. But if this person, this outside influence person, third party energy, whatever it is, it it comes back attached to to either you or um or attached to the situation every time you feel like you're just about to move on. Why is what do you need to release here? Okay. You have reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. And passion. Allow your heart to, and soul to sing with joy. Mm. Okay. Some of you guys are, are definitely going to reconcile with this person. You guys are going to sleep together. Now. If this is not... Uh, the one that you have already met and um, this person is being dragged back into your circle or sphere or um, whatever it may be, there there should be no, like, um, okay. Reconciliation is fine, you know? Like, um, trying to amend whatever it is that, um, you know, whatever fallout you may have had with this person. But the fact that um, passion is here right next to reconciliation just kind of spells sex to me. Under the deck, you have codependency, getting to know each other, and you deserve love. This person's, this person's um, addicted to, to ruining... Your relationships. Yeah, there's a codependency on you. And every time you're in this, this um, getting to know each other phase, this person comes on in like, yeah, yeah, you deserve love, but from me, not from nobody else. Like, why would you, why would you even go somewhere else? Why would you need to go somewhere else is what I keep hearing. Yeah, this person, this person has a, t a, a, a fucking, a tie on you. Tell me a little bit more about reconciliation. We have separation, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. If 
if you do not want to lose this person, because I, I, this person right here, the this could be the one is not your ex. The release your ex energy is tied into this reconciliation um, energy that's tied into this codependency that's ki that's tied into this chemistry which is tied to this like oh every time you think that you're going to move on I'm going to come and seduce you and then I'm going to leave because I got to go back and do the shit I have to do um, you're still going to be there laying waiting for me when I come back right okay bet <laughs> That is fucking crazy. You guys, some of you guys could be dealing with a narcissistic. This is narcissistic tendency, guys, if you guys did not know. Um, if you guys don't know what a narcissist is, you should look it up. Be, especially if this is the type of person that you're dealing with, Aries. Um, yeah, they're, they're, just, they're coming in to drain you every single fucking time. Every time. And they like it and they enjoy it. And they know that not only when they leave... Not only do they leave you drained, they leave you all, they leave your energy scattered. And, oh my God, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to explain how I feel. It's not just drained. It's like a bent and broken, just straight tore the shit up and left. Knowing that they're going to come back. And chances are this person always comes back without an apology too. They're just like, hey baby, I'm here. Hi. And you're like, uh, no. And they're like, uh, what? You know? And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> Tell me about release your ex. Yeah, the Hierophant. If you're trying to move into a steady commitment here, you need to let this codependent shit go. Tell me about this could be the one. The Emperor, yeah. Dude, this... Get out of your fucking ego. You don't need two people. You don't need this past person and your present person. You need one or the other or none. If you're going to be like that, like, straight up, Aries. Like, that's how I feel. And I feel like you should really choose the person that, um, that loves you for you. Unconditionally. And if this is their energy, this emperor energy, that's that's definitely being an ego. If you're an ego, what was fucking that fuck? That's where that's where the narcissistic lives, in their ego. Tell me about reconciliation. The empress. You need to choose, Aries. Who's going to be the empress, your empress, because this is you, this is Aries, Aries, and Taurus, but also, um, you know, this could be vice versa, you know, gender doesn't matter, but this does represent Aries, and to me, this represents that you have a choice, you have a choice, because there's been a separation, there's a possible reconciliation here with a past life divine counterpart but you you've already met the romantic person you seek so do you really want to risk this brand new beginning in love with a divine counterpart for an old soulmate yeah you have hangman under under the deck piscean energy the strength card and justice you need to you you need to stop. Um, you need to you, shift your perspective. You need to stop hanging on to to indecision. You're you're writing it out. You know that. I think it's funny because I you, you definitely know you have a win win um, situation either way you go. But you need to have, you need to find the strength in you, Aries, to bring justice to the situation. You have 
Leo Virgo um, Libra here and then the Empress is Libra Cancer Taurus and you have Taurus again with the Hierophant you have the lovers under the deck you need to make a decision because the more you stall in this decision somebody's going to make the decision for you and if you do decide to reconcile with this ex you know what's going to happen you know that the first thing you're going to do is you're going to jump into bed with them and like 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 we said like you're going to be there you're going to you're still going to be laying there when i come back right like nah what the fuck like you're an emperor you're an empress like i ain't, i ain't hanging around for nobody like i'm going to i'm going to gather my strength and bring some fucking karmic justice in this bitch and get <laughs> you need to get cut out it's like, I'm going to cut you out before you cut me out, basically. Especially if you have someone there, like I said, in the background, this could be the one. And it's literally here, like, underneath all this, all this bullshit, you have a person, a real soulmate that you could reconcile with that isn't going to leave you, that there's a real passionate beginning with, that, you, and you do deserve love. You deserve love, Aries. You don't, you don't deserve to be constantly... Um, being pulled back to this situation. Okay, we have number 35. Solitude, loneliness, isolation. Only in quiet waters do things mirror themselves undistorted. Only in a quiet mind is adequate perspective.